just always known I've wanted to be a teacher. Like, I just, that's always what I've wanted to do. I can remember fifth grade, my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Coleman, who lived down the street from me, needed help cleaning out her classroom, and I can remember her sending home old workbooks and stuff, and I was just thrilled. And I, my best friend across the street, Amy, we always played school in the garage. We had a big, huge chalkboard that our neighbor had made for us um, on the side of our garage, inside of our garage, and we had old desks and we would play for hours and my sister who is seven years younger than I am was always our people. I always had sort of a knack about how to have a sense of how to break things down for people to explain them to them. I've always enjoyed interacting with students and kids so I think I just liked everything about school. I got into journalism completely by accident, mostly out of necessity. I always thought I would teach English and then like advise the speech and debate team or direct school plays. I always had a really interest in speech, um, forensics and that type of thing. Um, but my first job, I was having a hard time getting hired right after college, um, was to teach English and do the yearbook and I knew nothing about yearbooks so I'm like, well, but I needed a job because I was married and moving to Toledo, so two weeks before the school year I got hired to do um, English and the yearbook. Then the school I was at closed two years later, so here I am looking for a job again, and this time the job came opening was English and doing the yearbook and the newspaper. I didn't know anything about newspaper, but again I needed a job, and I needed a job in Toledo because that's where I lived. Um, so I said, well sure, I can, I can add newspaper to my skill set. <laughs> I could do a yearbook, I figured that out. Um, and then after the first year I went to the school principal and said I cannot teach English and yearbook and newspaper and journalism so they made it an all journalism load. And then after that I got involved in the Scholastic Press Association with my students and I just got the design bug. Which in a way if I look back is not really surprising. Um, when I was like in our church youth group or in high school or that, I would design the programs for our plays, I would design newsletters and all those kinds of things. So I'm not kind of surprised that I ended up in this field, but it wasn't what I thought I would be doing. I've been at the university longer than I've been at any other job. Um, I was two years at Macaulay, eight years at Sylvania, and then I was off for three years and I've been here going on 20 years. I love working with students. College teaching is much more conducive to family life. Like, I was able to put my daughter on the school bus, I could come down, teach my classes, and be back in time for her to be off the school bus. Um, if I need to make calls with students, you know, I don't have to worry about, I got office hours to work with them and those kinds of things. So it's not the strict 7.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon and you have no breaks in between and the other nice thing is typically, but not always, I'm usually teaching different things all day long. So I'm teaching a class that I took as an undergrad at the university, so it's kind of fun. And I tell them that, I've been here, I've been in this class, I, I was on the receiving end of the education, so I know both sides. <laughs> It's a little bit different. That was the one class that ruined my 4.0 for the semester, because I got a B. It's a hard class to teach. Most of them are integrated language arts majors, so they want to be teachers, education teachers. They want to probably teach English. So here I am trying to teach them in a 15-week class period something that's completely out of their comfort zone, like how to write a feature story, which is a lot like an English essay, just without all of the extra verbiage and that kind of stuff and has a formula one sentence to a paragraph and they're used to five to seven sentences to a paragraph so they really it's hard for them you know it puts a lot of the burden on helping them to recognize that they're being challenged and they should embrace the challenge rather than this is a lot of work it's a lot of work because it's out of your comfort zone 
the first main thing is you don't have to have it figured out. Like, I have had a completely successful career doing something I didn't envision I would be doing. I mean, I really thought I would be directing school plays and teaching To Kill a Mockingbird. And that is not what I'm doing, you know, in any stretch of the imagination. That um, it just, life happens, circumstances happen, and opportunities present themselves, and you just take it along the path. So you don't have to have it all figured out, you know. Um, you need to do stuff you love to do and are passionate about, and I love to teach. So, you know, even at the university, if I would have had to put more research into my job, I probably would have gone back to high school. Because I enjoy the teaching piece. That's where my strength is. That's what I enjoy doing. So you should be doing what you love, what you have the talents for. Um, other than that, I think you should just always do your best. Really, truly, you're your name is on this, your reputation is on this, this is a ref your work and what you do is a reflection of who you are. So just do the best you can and be kind to people. Kindness will carry you further than anything. My name is Kelly Taylor. I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Journalism and Public Relations at Bowling Green State University. I have always been a teacher my entire career. I have always been a Northwest Ohio girl. I grew up in Findlay, uh, went to college in Bowling Green, got married, moved to Toledo, and now I'm back to Bowling Green to finish out my career, and then who knows where I'll be after that. That's kind of my story.